if someone does good, it's either because they're on gear or because they have good genetics. If someone does bad, it's because they have bad genetics. It's never allowed just to be because someone worked hard or didn't work hard or any other real factors that actually matter. It's almost always blamed on genetics for good or bad, taking away the responsibility and the accountability. So I know I only posted a handful of videos up to this point, but one thing I've already begun to notice a lot of is comments about genetics again, which is something that I hear lots of other creators complain about. Thought it was my turn to make a video on genetics because I guess it was inevitable. Don't know what I was expecting otherwise. I decided to, instead of coming home and immediately eating food after working all night, I decided to steal my daughter's whiteboard and pretend to be smart. Now, I am no statistical professional or anything. I actually didn't finish my, my statistics class, so don't use this for any academic means. I'm just using this as a general example because I do believe it does apply. So what you see here is called a normal distribution, informally called a bell curve distribution. Why on earth am I bringing this up? Is because smart people have determined that things like statistics and distributions of large numbers and probabilities and all this stuff is this same pattern here holds out in a lot of stuff, including in our case for today, talking about genetics and how good and bad and average genetics are distributed amongst a population, i.e. humans, of which there's what, 8 billion of us or something? So that is a sufficiently large sample size for a normal distribution like this one to occur. So let me explain a little bit of what's going on here so it can make some sense. As you can tell here right in the middle is where it's biggest and that center line is, is the average of all of the data, perfectly average, which means in our case, if you had like the averagest of average genetics, you are that line there. And you also notice most, the biggest point of the data is right there. And all these other little dashes and colors represent something called standard deviations. Exactly how that works doesn't matter. It's just a way of like congregating the data for how far something is from average. So for our purposes, how this applies to us and the discussion about genetics is everywhere here. So the slightly above average genetics in this section and the slightly below average in this section is all within one standard deviation of the averagest of average dude or dudette out there, which means that effectively on average, take a shot every time I say average, I'm not liable for your hospital bill. About 68% of people will have normal-ish, average-ish genetics. So the majority of people will be pretty close to normal as far as your genetics work. The next big jump out of there when you start to get to people that are definitely above average over here and definitely below average over here, Everything under this entire area accounts for 95% of people. So what that effectively means is 95% of people, what is that? 19 out of every 20 people you see will have either average-ish or slightly above average-ish or slightly below average-ish genetics. 19 out of 20 people, if I didn't massively screw up that math. Once you get all the way out here to the extremes, to people with truly elite genetics, or actually it's probably even a further number out for what truly elite genetics are, or people that just got absolutely screwed over here. Well, actually these are probably people that have things like that disease that make it so whenever your soft tissue tries to regrow, it regrows its bone or something. And that's a real thing. You slowly become, your, all your body becomes a skeleton, not just your skeleton. It sounds terrible. Like 
people that have it bad, bad, and no one's questions that they have it bad, bad are over here. The people that have it really good and no one questions that they have it really good are over here. The people over here are the ones that, like the first time they ever stepped in the gym, they were repping two plates on the bench, having never even, like freshmen in high school, never touched a barbell and they're up into 25. These people are over here or beyond. But all of this, everything under here, people ranging from the averagest of the average all the way to the elite is all encompassed under all here, which is 99.7% of data on average, like really close to 100, which is why, because there's still always that little bit for their outliers in each direction, it can go even further, which arguably is probably where the real elites of genetics are. These are probably, would probably better consider just people with exceptional genetics. So you could call if you're here in that like 2.35% exceptional genetics. Here, 13.5% above average. Here, in this 34%, so over a third of people, slightly above average, if not just so close to average, you just call it average which also flips to this side too. So the point of all of this is, and trying to show you how this works, is bringing up genetics isn't, isn't really worth it in the vast majority of cases. There's so many other factors that are radically more important than the genetics discussion for how fast you can make progress, for how much progress you can make, for how strong you can get, for how big you can get, for so many things, your programming, your training, your nutrition, your recovery, your mindset of going in to everything, your consistency, how long you're doing it, those are way more important than talking about this because there's a 68% chance this is you, that you're just normal. And if you're not normal, there's a 95% chance that you're at least normal-ish. This is largely why I don't consider genetics are worth bringing up for the most part because there's so many other factors that are worth bringing in because for all you know, like, since most people don't express their genetic potential, they could be in any number of places over here. So you could be working with people that are like way up over here, significantly above average or even exceptional genetics, but because they apply the average amount of effort, which you know from watching people is no effort, they don't train, they, ne they never have a chance to find out what their potential actually is. However, you, on the other hand, you could be down over here. As long as you aren't in a truly abysmal place genetically, that would, would be obvious. You would probably be medically diagnosed with pretty significant things, but even then you can still train most of the time. You could just be like significantly below average genetically in terms of your potential, but you can choose, you can choose to apply an exceptionally rare amount of effort that most people don't choose to do. And given five, 10 years, you can build a physique that most people will then, will then, will then cause most people to assume you have exceptional genetics. When you don't, you suck, but you worked with the cards you were given and you built something because you actually tried. Whereas everyone else, didn't. You haven't already um, heard him tell his story. Natural hypertrophy actually is a pretty good example. Like as he tells his story, he was kind of down here himself. Genetically, he was a really scrawny dude, was so weak he could barely do like knee push-ups. He had no physicality, but he has now built himself to the point to where like a lot of people are claiming he has great genetics when he doesn't. There was no way I was going to live in that small body for the rest of my life. So I started training and the funny thing that actually triggered me and I literally mean triggered me to do that is that I got beat in harm wrestling by a friend of mine who happened to be a girl and Asian. I mentioned Asian because she was very skinny and fair and the type of delicate lady that you would never think could do anything physical 
And in reality, it, it was true. She was extremely weak. And yet she pinned me. When that happened, I told myself, okay, this is not acceptable. It's, it's toxic masculinity, right? Who, which arose within myself. And I was like, I just got beat by a 15 year old uh, girl. This is not okay. I need to start training. No matter what I have to do, I'll do it. So I just jumped the guns and started doing. He lists the reason he has bad genetics. He started off incredibly weak. Couldn't even do like basic push-ups. Took years of doing basic calisthenics to be able to just lift the bar. Has like narrow clavicles, broad waist, all of this stuff. All bad genetics. But he applied exceptional effort over time. So I got to cut myself off. I right, will keep going on. I can say the same thing like five times in seven different ways and I still won't feel like I've done enough. So just focus on the stuff you can control and then you see what becomes of that. Just stick to it. So there we go.